This is happiness to be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned. Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of Mood Prep. My name is Dave Nixon. And uh, today we're going to talk about this idea of controlling control. Um, sort of catastrophizing is actually, I want to go down that path in a moment, but basically looking at this concept of, of trying to control things, especially external things, right? Let alone other people. Now, often, more often than not, that people that try to control things are, you know, um, a quote unquote um, control freak, is often because they themselves are out of control. And so, to put it simply, when we are, especially in this more extreme, the ex- more towards the extreme end of the bell curve of having to, to control things or self-emitting OCD and, and this type of uh, behavior, we aren't trying to control anything. We're actually being controlled, right? It's the same as like, uh, micromanaging and and also making sure everything goes to plan and all that kind of stuff. There comes a point where it's there's a lot of things outside, there's a lot of factors that are like just fucking luck. That no matter what you do, no matter how much you plan, there are just some things that can go the way that against the way you plan. And so the reality of that allows us to then have an expectation. So we paint this expectation of of the future. And paint, painting that expectation, let's let's call it positive and negative for now. We'll go into it in a minute. Can actually be detrimental to the way that reality actually unfolds. Considering the fact that there's seven billion people that are trying to, you know, let the universe <laughs> have expectations about how things should be and all this sort of stuff. And so, th- having an expectation does come down to a sense of trying to control having a, a like almost like a soft core type of control around the future and it's just like well it didn't meet my expectations it's like well it doesn't matter it just it just was whatever it was whether it's a movie or a sporting event or a, a date uh, or anything along those lines it all gives us an understanding of us as of ourselves has nothing to do with the event the 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 film the person um, the dinner has nothing to do with that and so this is like oh just remove expectations and you know then everything just is fucking great it's like can you hear the expectation in that <laughs> it's still an expectation it's like it's not about removing expectations it's about not being attached right which is also attaching to non-attachment by the way so that aside <laughs> this is the duality you'll fucking see it everywhere but that that aside it's sort of being able to look at the future, choosing to look at the future, not just running that way and thinking about it. Same with the past. And if you ever catch yourself, and this is definitely me, um, it's it's a thinking pattern called worst case scenario or best case scenario. They're the two ends of the of the of the spectrum. And I would worst case scenario the shit out of like fucking every single, every single. Just about every single situation, right? And what would happen is that, like, it, it catastrophizing. So that's that's what it was often told to me as what I learned later on. It was simply just literally looking at a, a, a potential of the future and running this worst case scenario thinking program. So I can tell you a specific time. I remember driving. We used to have a second gym, and I remember driving the the Ute that I had from that second gym. And it was the it was like the second of January. We we're liquidating it the next day, right? And we couldn't get out of the lease. The landlords weren't playing ball, and so we're like fuck it, let's take everything and liquidate it, and so on and so forth. And um, I remember driving, and the car was like dumped full of weights. And I remember thinking, oh, how do you move this big rock? And I'm going to get found out for moving that big rock because I had to drive closer to the actual gym. And then, because I had to do that, then they're going to tell the landlord, landlord's going to come down, we're not going to be allowed to do it, I'm going to have to pay all the rent out, like, you know, in the next two weeks, and all these sorts of thinking, I was like, fuck, and then the car is just going to blow a tire on my way back to the other, all this type of thinking, and I'm like, fuck me, none of this is going to, none of this is happening, for one, but two, I was like, shit, I caught myself, it's like, right, okay, well, 
that's a that, that's a worst case scenario type thinking. I go, what what could the best case scenario look like? And then asking that question, up come this whole like scenario of like paying minimal amount of money, everything working out fine, and and like a really you know um, better situation occurring in my mind. And I just had all this relief for one, but then I also acknowledge that and acknowledge the worst case scenario. And in doing both of those acknowledgements, the whole concept just dissipated, just left and went back to driving. I didn't have to force anything. I didn't have to shame my, my worst case scenario program or anything like this. And this is a conversation I have had recently around this like catastrophizing is, is a worst case scenario thinking pattern. The thing about it though is that it serves us well. I, I Running a worst case scenario thinking pattern as a default allows me to now that i recognize that step out of it and not think positive it's not about that it's about realizing that neither worst case nor best case is likely ever going to happen and both of them about the future it means that i'm not here in the present doing what i'm meant to be doing or what i could be doing in fact if i'm thinking about the future whatever i'm doing now i'm not doing i'm not here right i might be running an autopilot but then that's what it is you're asleep i'm asleep doing that so how much do people actually sleep is the question. So it's not about worst case or, or best case or negative and positive and one being good, one being bad because a worst case scenario type thinking can be really, really you know, powerful. The amount of times that a worst case scenario type thinking may have saved my life, I would never actually know. It was like, oh, maybe it's too wet to ride the bike. Yeah, I won't ride the bike. That worst case scenario, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, it'll be right. Just jump on, it'll be fine. Probably... But maybe not doing that because of the worst case scenario saved my life. Maybe not getting on a particular bus when I was traveling in Europe because I was like, oh, I'm not sure about that. Maybe it saved my life. Like I don't know. But the thing about the worst case scenario is that it, make, it allows you to be somewhat the critic if you're aware of it. And that that's okay because you can critique things and you become often a mismatcher. And so you'll just look for differences. And so the beauty here isn't being worst case or best case. In fact, we're both and we're also neither because it's simply just a thinking pattern. It's just a pattern and we potentially have a default. And and too much best case is not good either. It's naive. That's the reality of it. It's like thinking positive is, is not like the, just the best things will happen to me. It's like, yeah, I'm sure there's been a lot of, it sounds bad, but a lot of people that have died with, with thinking positive. It's like it's, a, it's irrelevant. It's just allowing yourself to see the thoughts that arise and, and have the flexibility to choose whatever is useful in that moment. And this is behavioral adaptability because you start to adapt the way that you make decisions and the choices and, and the thoughts that you deem to be true based on what is needed in the moment rather than the old style of oh, it's just how I am. It's like, no, it's not. That's lazy. It's not who you are or how you are or anything along those lines. It is simply a way that you're perceiving reality. It's a perceptual filter. And so when we're looking at controlling and we're looking at the future and we're controlling control, it's actually controlling us. And when we're trying to control everything based on a worst case, then what we're doing is catastrophizing, potentially catastrophizing something about the future that may never happen that we're trying to control, which means we're out of control. So how do we then relinquish control? It's like, well, see the worst case, see the best case, and realize that the universe is unfolding as it is, and this sounds like, oh, fucking universe, this or that. It's just like, no, it just is. There's there's seven fucking billion people on this planet, let alone the universe itself and all the animals and everything, everything else that's going on. So, like, look at what's in your control, thoughts, behavior, your speech, and your emotions, and make decisions based on what you know you can react with. React, respond. And in doing that, it allows us to stay in control of what's in our control. And then the stuff that's not in our control no longer controls us. We don't lay in bed at night worrying about things that are out of our control. We let our brain go to sleep so we can recover, so we can go back the next day and do what it needs to do, not worry about what it can't do. And on that note, team, I'm out. If you haven't already, you you should be looking at, you should be, listen to me, shooting all over you, should, should, should. Uh, I'd love it if you check out the uh, Mood Prep Online, not Mood Prep Online, well, you could on Facebook, but that's probably a good idea as well. But the Mood Prep Intensive, it's coming up on the 9th and, 9th and 10th of March. I'm getting my dates all mixed up. I know I've got a seminar on the 6th and 7th here. 
with strong fit. It's the 9th and 10th. It is the 9th and 10th. My little brain fade. Um, in Canberra, uh, if you haven't already and you're keen or interested to get along or you've got questions, hey, get in touch. More than happy to chat. Otherwise, you can learn more about the Mood Prep Intensive Weekend um, at my website, davenixon.com.au forward slash seminars. You'll see it there. Otherwise, yes, jump on Facebook, Mood Prep Online. Otherwise, that's it. I'm it. I'm it. I'm done. That's me done. Uh, until tomorrow, peace and pizza. Kick today in the dick. Slay the dragon. I'll see you guys soon. To be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned.